Uh, very good afternoon to all of you, uh, the respected panel members. Uh, on behalf of Savitri Bhai Phule Pune University, I would like to welcome all of you to this uh, webinar on how to nurture entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship through higher education. Uh, we all are debating, I think, and discussing whether recently the uh, higher education policy has been declared by the government. And uh, uh, today, I think uh, we have a galaxy of panel members I would like to welcome on behalf of my faculty uh, and the uh, people who are present here, faculty members uh, under Savitri Vay Phule Pune University. Uh, Mr. Vinit Bhanzali ji, Mr. Pankaj Khanna ji, Professor Adit Jadhav sir, and Nitin Karpe and my co-host uh, Anshul Kapoor who is there and uh, the faculty members who are joining here from the various institutes uh, here and uh, online on the Facebook uh, web page. I think uh, this uh, education policy has brought us a lot of changes after so many years I think and we all are aware that this uh, entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship I think the kind of system we have followed for so many years I think it has only creating a people who come out with a degree and search for some job on the basis of that piece of paper which is called as degree. We have never looked at development of skills. Now here we are talking about upskilling where teachers are also required to upskill themselves. It's not only the student because the kind of technology has been come into this education. We have gone online, we synchronous, asynchronous mode of learning environment and there are so many challenges are faced even by the teachers also. It's not that easy that because whenever you go inside the class and close the door, what happens inside only student and the teachers know. But now it's an open forum. When the, when the student is there uh, online, I think his whole family is also watching and listening to the teachers who are delivering the session. So I think creating that kind of quality content, creating a, a learning environment when student is at home, sitting ideal, sitting with the family member, uh, sitting in a comfort zone, uh, he may have some issues and challenges related to the uh, bandwidth issues with there, the battery bandwidth and so many issues are there. I think in spite of that, we have triggered uh, with a lot of uh, activities uh, been conducted under this university and I, uh, now this uh, new policy or what curricula we design and deliver in Savitri uh, by Phule Pune University in all places I think mostly now we focus that uh, we need to focus more on creating entrepreneurs rather than just creating graduates or postgraduates. And I think that uh, that kind of mindset, I think, because uh, sometimes it happens that whenever a student do a post-graduation program in MBA also, whenever he joins a company, he wants somebody to instruct every morning that what he should do. I think that's the entrepreneurship we are talking about, that he should not look for the salary on the day, first week of every month, and then just uh, do a clerical work or the paperwork throughout the month. I think he should look in the similar opportunities in the same organization, try to find out the new avenues, the new ways. I think this kind of uh, partnership thought process should be get created in the mind. It should not be monotonous where I join and then every year I should just make good morning, good afternoon and make my boss happy so that I get the salary and the increment in the proper time. I think today's uh, this webinar will definitely help all of us to rethink over whatever systems and this should start in the teaching learning process itself. It should not only happen when the student pass out and then he start applying his mind creatively. Because our whole system is based on paper and pencil. Our all teaching system is based on memory system. So whatever he writes on a particular day in a particular two or three hours time, I think that is the final, I think. The concurrent and continuous evaluation, which is the thought process has gone in, even in CBCS system, which has been implemented in many universities, from 2018 onwards, I think it has triggered that you cannot judge the student on one day in three hours. His mindset, his memory cannot be only criteria to judge that he's a good manager or a bad manager. So it has, they need to have various kinds of skills. You need to check the skills at appropriate time, point in time, and then nurture that decision-making process within that original thinking process he must be able to write of its own mind. And I think in India, we are right now going through the crisis that whether the exam should be conducted or not. I think the solution is that it should not be a one point examination. It should be a continuous and concurrent evaluation where every stage student should get a feedback from his teacher that what has gone right and what has gone wrong. Because our education system number is the only figure which student get. 
so he's got 90% or 98% or whatever marks has been given to him it doesn't give him reflection that was it right where he was right the way he's thinking is correct or not so so many challenges and things are there i think we are in the right forum to see that how we can take it ahead and we can really think about developing these kind of skills maybe initially entrepreneurship because students are afraid of starting their own venture in initial stage because they are afraid of failures but entrepreneurship and then he can become an entrepreneur in the days to come he start lot of things lot of innovative practice has been uh, uh, given encouraged by the governments even the university also we also have a uh, innovation and incubation cell in savitri bai phule pune university and we are encouraging people to come incubation and all these thing hand holding is been done we are supporting with the uh, venture capitalist so so many activities are initiated by the uh, government also to encourage all these thing but still our you know that mindset is still rigid we want somebody should tell somebody should pay and we should be uh, stress free in our life so i think with this note i would request uh, mr anshur kapoor to take this uh, webinar ahead i would like to thank all of you to being here and we are eager to hear you thank you very much thank you so much dr kalgar hi all i am anshul kapoor ceo at mb roundu and rain and i along with dr kalgar will be moderating the session today so today we have an amazing panel with us which comprises of entrepreneurs investors industry leaders and senior academic leaders and we'll be discussing about how to nurture entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship through higher education so in our panel we have with us mr vinit bansali a serial entrepreneur third investor and is currently vice president at orios venture partners which is an early stage venture capital fund in india vinit founded copper spiral in 2007 and then built kar in 2014 prior to copper spiral he was a partner at new jersey and florida based adina built kar was acquired in 2018 and adina in 2017 we welcome you mr vinit we also have with us mr pankaj khana who is head of revenue assurance at nit technologies and he leads the global staffing functions comprising of workforce management talent acquisition and campus recruitment programs we welcome mr khanna as well to the panel we also have our dear dr aditya jada from tapmi manipal he is a professor in the area of finance and takes courses on corporate finance investment banking project finance and investment finance he is also in charge of corporate engagement and branding at tapmi a hearty welcome to you professor aditya we also have with us senior leader mr ninar karpe who is partner at 100x.vc which invests in early stage startups he is a director at eptech limited and director at sloan kit prior to this he was ceo and managing director at eptech we welcome you mr karpe thank you so as is often said the future belongs to those who be who believe in the beauty of their dreams and to this i would also like to add entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs are dreamers who set their goals to achieve their dreams with the new education policy which was released recently which also focuses on developing skills and the multidisciplinary approach to education and also the atmanirbhar bharat initiative of government of india will require even more entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs to make india self reliant hence the topic of the discussion today becomes even more pertinent with this i would now request each panelist to share their opening remarks and i would start with mr ninar karpe may i invite you to have your opening comments please thank you thank you anshul thank you uh, uh, panelists uh, for inviting me thank you dr kelkar aditya jadav pankaj and my good friend vinit i'm glad you gave me the first chance to speak because if vinit had spoken i would have nothing else to say uh, vinit is comprehensive article articulate and uh, very popular so good i am getting a chance before uh, my good friend vinit uh, says anything uh, but this is a very large topic i will not take too long uh, i will just take just couple of minutes and throw some thoughts and ideas which we can mull on later uh, particularly on nurturing entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship in higher education let me give you two real examples i was the chairman cii western region and then before that maharashtra 
and uh, because of that i got an of course in aptech so i was fortunate to visit a lot of small towns and places in india uh, particularly in the western region and speak to a lot of colleges engineering mba commerce uh, and i saw a very interesting trend over the last 10 years uh, or let's say 10 years back if i asked a class of uh, undergrad students uh, how many of you want to become joint startups or uh, how many want to how many of you want to start a startup a uh, fairly 10 20% used to raise their hands and others used to look at them startled are you sure are you serious today it's a reverse 80% uh, raise their hands uh, and doesn't matter whether it is kolapur whether it is uh, you know surat they raise their hand that's an inspiration aspiration and the beauty is the story doesn't end there the balance 20% if i ask them to say what are you planning to do most of them if not all say that i want to work for 2 3 years in a large company and then join a startup so this is the kind of students we have the aspiration is very clear they are not worried uh, about uh, you know a startup or joining a startup let me give one more story of aspiration then come to real three or four specific points on encouraging nurturing entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship when i was md at aptech i went to a very small town i won't name the town or the person i met i i'll tell the story in exactly 60 seconds uh, he was doing working on a, a project connected to uh, animation it's a arena it's a animation uh, school and Uh, on his t-shirt a black t-shirt was the word written jesus j u s u s and when i tapped him he wasn't in the mood to talk but the long uh, i cut the long story short and finally asked him why have you written jesus remember this is a very very small town in india uh, and he said i want to be the god of animation the very best in the world not just that town not just that state very best in the world and you know just to make conversation i asked him uh, really he said yes i require nothing else but a mind without border and a pipe pipe as you all know in the it industry refers to connective so these are the students who are studying today learning today it is us educators uh, people from the industry uh, vcs who have to ensure that their dreams are are taken care of are nurtured let me come to two three uh, points traditionally we had entrepreneurship cells in colleges which are more advisory in nature Uh, those days are gone no one wants your advice uh, obviously they want money but we are not expecting education institutions to put money and this is where my friend vinith comes and along with him i'll also come if he comes somewhere uh, to actually fund early stage startups but more importantly incubation is something which uh, we have recently started uh, it is caught up very well and there is today no reason why any good educational institution should not have incubation center in their premises uh, they i am not a votary for the government not a spokesperson for the government but the atal incubation center uh, policy by the government of india niti aayog is fantastic i don't think any other country uh, of course israel has its own uh, kind of policies but very few countries have such an amazing policy to promote incubation 10 crores uh, expenses taken care of if you have just 10000 square feet incubation is required by the kids and there's nothing like risk free uh, this kids understand that there's nothing like risk free but to reduce mitigate advise uh, incubation is the right way to go and another model which has been successful uh, globally and we should follow it to encourage more entrepreneurs is co colleges should allow professors to become advisors to these uh, startups and take a small equity 2% 1% 3% sweat equity Uh, it is a model which has worked very successfully a lot of countries outside india israel uh, you know us uh, we need to encourage and allow these people to become advisors so uh, my first point incubation is a must uh, you know the uh, days of entrepreneurship cells are cells are over they require real guidance real hand holding uh, and incubation models are known so i won't elaborate on those models but really speaking incubation model is something which needs to be done let me touch briefly on national education policy it's a huge document if you read the entire text not just newspaper or items uh, very nice comprehensive uh, very articulate a lot of areas covered higher education covered in a massive you know a lot of areas two points um, it speaks about multidisciplinary approach to higher education 
and also speaks about more or less a self-governing mechanism. Uh, the disappointment from the current topic, I think the policy is fantastic. From the topic which you're discussing, there's not a single mention of entrepreneurship or startups uh, in the entire document. Uh, there is a lot of discussion on vocational education. Uh, probably it wasn't brought forward to their table, uh, but yes, there is no mention of uh, how colleges can encourage startups, how colleges can encourage uh, entrepreneurship. And in that context, uh, it is really incumbent on colleges uh, not just to have courses on entrepreneurship, but really speaking, uh, it is so easy now to get the very best in the world to come on a Zoom call or uh, you know any other collaboration call. If you want Vinit Bansali to speak to the uh, graduating students, he he can't say no because you're not calling him to Pune. Earlier he used to know my calendar full. Hai. I'm so busy. Uh, Vinit will easily say yes and saying yes on his behalf. Uh, so please call him to speak to the final year students. Uh, more importantly. Uh, you know, uh, more than just uh, courses, there are one or two things, you know, uh, dealing with startup entrepreneurs which have found lacking and maybe educational institutions need to fill that gap. One is an overall course on, even for engineers or others, a uh, little bit basics of finance. Uh, it is required for entrepreneurs. You can't get become an entrepreneur without understanding that. And vice versa, uh, coding has now become the new English. Uh, you cannot survive without English, so you can't survive without coding. Uh, so even if you're learning philosophy, uh, you have to have some understanding of learn coding. So these are two skills uh, which I generally believe uh, need to be given and uh, college education are the right places to give that. Uh, let me briefly talk about the last point and then I'll hand it over back to you and I can elaborate, but I'm aware that a lot more uh, people are here to talk and I'm keen to see what Vinit is going to talk. But the last and the most important thing I want to talk about uh, you know, when you're creating entrepreneurs or nurturing them, is the power of networking. Uh, we generally, and uh, people get very, very defensive when I tell them that uh, overall there's no sense uh, or uh, no uh, strategy, or no investment in time, money in the power of networking with alumni. I'll give a simple example. I've studied in India and have studied in a college in Bombay. I won't name the college. The only time I get an email from them is when they want to raise funds. Uh, I want to know what's happening every month, every quarter, every six months. Zero communication. I have graduated 30 years back. Now you know my real age. But on the other hand, both my kids have graduated from US. As a parent, I get every month uh, some information what's happening in the institute. From one institute to other place every quarter. As a parent, I mean, as a student, not even a student. Uh, and it's not that they're looking for money all the time, but there is engagement. And our engagement is uh, more tactical over here. Uh, the power of networking, of creating more entrepreneurs is huge. Each institution has to tap entrepreneurs from their colleges who have been successful, call them to the colleges, uh, motivate the students. You have to tap VCs who are from your college, uh, you know, tell them these are the students from a college, the startups. The power of networking is huge, alumni network. I'll end my, you know, uh, my three minutes or four minutes over here by saying, these are some limited points I wanted to make. And I thought, let me share some specific points rather than give a general observation. So over to you, Anshu. Thank you. Thank you for your remarks, Mr. Karpe. And as you rightly mentioned, uh, the aspirations of students have moved towards joining startups and building their own companies. So now I'll invite Professor Jadav for his opening comments, please. Thanks, Anshul. Uh, uh, good afternoon to all of you, uh, Mr. Vineet, Mr. Pankaj, uh, Mr. Ninad, uh, Dr. Parag. Uh, thanks for having me on this uh, discussion. It's a very fantastic discussion, Anshul. Uh, I should congratulate you and uh, uh, Dr. Kalkar for getting it started. And I think uh, Mr. Ninad has done a fantastic job. Uh, he basically discussed a lot of things that I would have discussed. So he has put me into a spot, but then I will take my views. Uh, so I'm sure, uh, I would discuss slightly on the angle of what is necessary from the faculty side to develop uh, the spirit of entrepreneurship and uh, the key aspects of entrepreneurship. Okay. So Certainly, like uh, Mr. Ninad was saying, a lot of people join colleges. When they join colleges, they are enthusiastic about having their own business, starting their own systems. Okay, it is more prominent in engineering colleges where uh, the responsibility of the funds involved is not heavily on the student. 
in management colleges you'll find that uh, zeal is slightly lower because they take uh, generally management graduates take a education loan and come and they know that okay they have a fixed payout to be done at the end of the year and hence want to at least wait till that payout completes and then start their own business but the zeal exists but what one of the key things that i have observed is uh, the three key aspects that entrepreneurship requires are not fairly focused upon okay we have entrepreneurial sales we have innovation sales we have hotel innovation mission and all but the three key aspects that really make the entrepreneur successful are not discussed in detail in colleges okay and uh, i think that is equally and uh, part of it uh, when i was discussing with one of my colleagues yesterday who helps the holds the entrepreneur cell here and i found that okay we also have not focused on that and those three aspects if you really ask me is need identification scope identification and commercialization okay so whichever entrepreneurship when i ask a student okay what would you like to start as a part of the entrepreneurship cell okay he saying sir i want to start a website doing this i want to start a website doing that the reason they are looking at this website oriented is nothing wrong but they find that okay someone has been successful in doing such a thing and it would be great if i can also replicate the same thing See, this replication thing is nothing wrong in it again i'll tell you but unless the replication is back strongly by a latent or an existing unfulfilled need okay this will not be the successful it will die on its own and though we might say failure is ki a country like india uh, people may not be able to afford failure the way someone might be able to afford failure in us okay indian rules indian society is very backward if you really look at failure as an idea okay so there is no so with that pressure in it is necessary as a faculty to help them understand the first thing is need that a really good need identification sustainable need identification which will help you grow in the business will make a lot of difference this always a replication successful replication the second thing i have seen people do not focus much is the scope identification that is when there is a need it is necessary that the need is sustainable for it to convert into a business that means there would be enough people requiring it and you should also have a, a mode to reach out that many people okay and that is where i found very few entrepreneurial cells or entrepreneurship cells in colleges or even many of these uh, uh, we can say as the ideation centers that have been opened up really look at the technological integration to generate a scope okay technology is used as a backbone technology is as a method of making things easier but you will find there the most of the things easier approach is for the entrepreneur rather than using it for the people who will absorb those needs or whose need is being satisfied technology is a fantastic scope creator today you can reach a much larger population making your business successful i don't think for example anshul 10 years back if i was going to discuss i would have even thought of engaging mba rendezvous for my own admissions process at tap me because you are sitting in delhi i am sitting in manipal you know and manipal and delhi never had a direct flight today if that flight is possible or zoom is possible i don't need that and today i am you are able to reach out to me i am able to reach out to you but this whole attitude okay can be has to be built in during the entrepreneurship in the colleges which is not done and the third most thing that mr, uh, mr. ninad was saying it finance but i would rather not talk it finance because whenever people think of finance they move slowly down accounting and the people say accounting means they leave it out there okay then it never comes back to it is commercialization okay it is necessary that people understand that entrepreneurship is about commercialization for example i see a lot of entrepreneurs because we have at manipal an entrepreneurship cell it's called mudbi manipal university uh, entrepreneur biological and uh, biomedical and uh, uh, technical uh, entrepreneurship cell okay i see lot of them are happy when they receive funding okay but they don't understand funding is an investment it's not your earning when are we going to look at earnings where is the discussion of saying that okay i need earnings i should start commercializing you will find commercialization has taken a big hit there is so much celebration about funding that there is no celebration or thinking about earning how many rounds of funding will you receive 2 3 4 after that okay somewhere you have to start earning 
many people don't look at it so this approach of commercialization is very very important the another thing i really find it very very much when i discuss with these students and whether they are engineering students of manipal institute of technology or my management students their whole business model is on the idea of market share fantastic nothing wrong in it but their whole approach of capturing the market share is discounts okay then when i discuss commercialization i would tell them discount is not the way to go okay discount only creates price wars it will never make your customer happy when you bring back the prices to the original the differentiating point the point where you can actually say you have a need and i am satisfying this need that something is basically lacking from the faculty point of view who is supposed to be a business faculty to inculcate among the student i am sure when we actually start looking at these three points in detail and really look at that ensure that a student is able to design a plan which is not only about product innovation but also commercial viability i am sure lot of lot more people will be ready to take up entrepreneurship as a career and not wait for them that i will settle out in my life or i will have a wife who will have a fixed earning and then i will start my own business because i know i have students i have friends you know started a business who are entrepreneurs but then have also taken a job for financial security and now are unable to manage the both and hence are saying okay financial security is important i will give a slip, slip to entrepreneurship okay this way the whole idea of atmanirbhar bharat and all those things will not have and i am not blaming them i am saying the fault lies with us as faculty we have not been able to develop that requisite attitude and understanding of the need scope and commercialization approach amongst the student thanks anshul that's from my side thank you professor aditya and from your views as you are suggesting three key aspects like successful entrepreneurship requires our need identification scope identification and commercialization thank you so much i now move over to mr pankaj mr khanna can i have your views please sure hey thanks anshul uh, and thanks everybody else to having me on the panel good to good to say hi as well as interact with the with the faculty as well as the other professionals on the call uh i was just wondering as i was listening to uh, you know of course nanad and aditya that um, what is the definition of an entrepreneur or entrepreneur right uh, and the funny thing is that if i look at the classical definitions and if i i mean i'm going back to my school days and the college days uh, it's very simply uh, you know explained i think in in a in a in a most commonest way that entrepreneur is anybody who takes risk whereas entrepreneur does not take a risk now the i think that set me wondering that you know is that what it means but the funny thing is that uh, i think our definitions of entrepreneurship as well as entrepreneurship also i think have been uh, you know socially uh, propagated over the years are actually uh, even you know basing the same kind of an approach same kind of a behavior the reason i i thought that this was something to you know to mull over is the is i think precisely you know what nanad and aditya actually touched upon and i will probably look at it uh, in a in a different flavor that uh, entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship in a different way but together are all about creating ideas innovating ideas except like i said the definition you know which has been imposed upon those english verbiage is that you know it's more internal to an organization which is entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship is more external so that is one uh, you know thought process by itself but the other thing which you know which keeps on uh, coming back as a discussion from a academy from a academia circles from the from the corporate circles is that how does one marry the marry successfully uh, both the areas and i think partly again referred to by the by in the earlier uh, discussions which came up one is networking that there is no doubt about it uh, networking and networking for the right reasons i think commercialization as uh, as was pointed out commercialization again for earnings it's not about you know getting funds or just celebrating those one or two or three funds but i think it's also important to understand that how do i leverage how do i uh, how do i figure out 
as to the gains which I have made from my education, either in terms of uh, you know creating an idea, innovating an idea, fostering an idea, or in my in in sometimes when I think about it, I also like to tell people that sometimes it is good to be a very good follower because good leaders require good followers. Good followers foster an idea. They actually build an idea. They execute an idea. So the reason I bring this point is that it's not only necessary to always be creating. I think it's sometimes also, also important that you align yourself with something which you believe uh, is something which can take you to a you know to a path of success and i think it's it's important that leaders also identify that part of the success story that unless they have a good set of followers to execute obviously there is nothing much to be gained out of it lastly uh, and i i will hand back to you uh, you know anshul after this commentary this part i think which uh, dr kirkar uh, also said i think nenaj touched upon it and so they did it. I'm saying that we should make it compulsory for all the faculty members to be associated with a corporate. It doesn't make a difference whether it is a startup, whether it's an old tenured organization or, or a new one. I think it's important to understand commercialization. I think it's important to understand uh, what makes uh, an organization tick. And I think it's also very important that the faculty marries that thought process and the learnings taking it back. It is not that the faculty or the academic circles don't know it. I think it's important that the students see that actual marriage. I think otherwise the danger is that most of the times uh, some institutes, some private institutes, some government institutes obviously try to say that, you know, we have got the right connects. But I think that right connects need to then get translated into some activity and some kind of a, a real on the ground demonstration that, you know, the partnership is working. So with that, Anshul, back over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Khanna. And I'll come back to you for a detailed discussion on the practical implementation of the collaboration which you were mentioning. Yes. So I'll move on to Mr. Vineet now. Uh, request your views, please. Thanks a lot, esteemed seniors on the panel. And uh, hopefully everyone who is watching as a student is a junior. Uh, you know, that's how it works. Uh, you know, while you've all had your points of views, I have a very interesting point of view where I may possibly be, without knowing all of your full backgrounds, the only one on this panel who has actually been an entrepreneur when I was still in my final year of college. Right. So uh, this was uh, Adina, you know, the company that Anshul you mentioned earlier. Uh, you know, uh, I was one, the third partner, one of three partners. Uh, this was before I finished my undergrad bachelor's degree, right? And uh, yes, you are, uh, you are all in various ways, right? Uh, being an entrepreneur in college needs to go beyond the e-cell. And I think uh, campus incubation is the way to go. We ourselves were incubated on an on-campus sort of location. You know, it was called EDC, Enterprise uh, Entrepreneurship Development Cell. Right. So while the name is e-cell and all of that, but here it was not an office. It was a full building where students who wanted to start something got access to tools, got access to space, got access to something as simple as, you know, a quiet room with table and chairs where you could bring your own computers and just get work done, right? And call yourselves a business, you know, give yourselves as students that professional feeling in your mind, where even if you had a potential customer or you were interviewing someone showed up, it was an excellent opportunity to show that you were serious about what you were doing. And it wasn't just a project for the semester. Right. So uh, I come from there and, uh, you know, we did have a successful uh, time of it. We had an exit around 2007 of the startup we started when I was in college. Uh, having said that, how do we make more students, uh, you know, take up entrepreneurship or entrepreneurship? I think one of the things that influence us a lot, when I say us, I mean the other startups that were in the building with us was consistent visits by other entrepreneurs. I don't even mean successful entrepreneurs. You know, it's very tough to ask a Sachin Bansal or a Binny Bansal to come and, you know, give a talk every other month. I'm, I'm not even saying that. I'm just meaning people who have successfully run a business and started it on their own, right? First generation entrepreneurs. Uh, there is a big difference when I, when I say first generation. Uh, I don't want to be little people who are running their family businesses, but that is not first generation. By definition, it is something beyond first. Uh, and this was a huge uh, push for us. 
and i would say that if colleges can invite more such first generation entrepreneurs uh, and you know just have interactions having them on stage is actually a bad thing but having interactions sit around like a round table is very important i'll just leave it at this everyone else has covered a lot of the other points uh, anshul thank you thank you so much mr vinit and with that i'll come down to certain aspects in detail and uh, since you were mentioning mr vinit about the student entrepreneurship my first question to you i'll start with that only that a lot of students come up with a query that is it advisable to start the journey of entrepreneurship while still pursuing the higher education as you started yourselves so what are your views what do you suggest now being through that journey while still being in college what do you suggest to the students so uh, anshul i and you know the all the professors here so i'll be happy to tell them sorry guys uh, you know this is something that comes from inside and once this sort of idea arises you know in your head that you want to start something then the worst case is you can get out of the way and the best case is you can help that student and i'd leave it at that right so if you feel you are students who you know have the passion and want to start something the best possible thing they can you can do as faculty as administrators is if you can't support them get out of the way and support could be many things right if they are doing something in a specific industry let's say they're doing something in the area of drones or robotics or it could be something as simple as you know building a saas software connect them you know like uh, uh, was said earlier connect them with alumni you know who have come in and maybe they have done something similar if you can't connect them with alumni from your own college that's perfectly fine connect them with other entrepreneurs from your own city who can come in and give that conversational edge so the student at that point doesn't feel alone and lonely that am i doing it right is this a phase and you know in one month will i get distracted right and it's great if it's a phase and if they get distracted they'd rather find this out by speaking to someone senior in the level you know in the area of entrepreneurship that's my tip thank you so so this is our first step towards what you just mentioned mr vinny and we'll take it forward from there also and i'll request professor aditya's views on this also sir do you suggest that it is advisable for students to start their startup while they are still pursuing their higher education Certainly, Anshul. I think that's a fantastic idea for a very simple reason. Anshul, I think it's a fantastic idea. Is uh, you know, at that age, everything seems possible. Okay, it is only when people start getting their grey hair, and it's including mine. Only you, I think, Anshul, in this list has uh, jet black hair, and I hope it is natural. Okay, those places are. It's very, very possible. so people will dream at that time and they think it's possible they can start the journey there and they have similar minds across and not a few number in a large number so that discussion then back and forth will certainly help them come out with a much much stronger idea than what could have been uh, as a stand alone approach and uh, the only thing is there should not be any fear amongst the student and that is again i am telling you the responsibility of the faculty to ensure that there is no fear among student to share an idea with their colleagues i mean if as an institution that type of culture an institute cannot create then it has failed you know more than anything else whether it creates entrepreneurs or not is secondary but it has certainly failed in creating a good institute if the students cannot live without fear in such a place and right. that's why i think it's a very good idea right 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 let me go across to mr karbe please Sir, what according to you are the most important skills that an entrepreneur should have, and what do you suggest that how could universities nurture those kind of skills in their students? So the most important skill today is resilience. Uh, resilience is important, and it encompasses everything: survival, growth, all of that. Uh, and this is now post-COVID era, uh, and this is the skill which is absolutely required. resilience is a skill which uh, can be nurtured it cannot be taught uh, and what is it that institutions can uh, do you know uh, well, some i thought so mentioned see these young students always find a solution in a problem uh, as opposed to others who find a problem in a solution so they'll always be fresh in their mind they will find solutions to everything and uh, the moment they step out of college just on the lane outside outside home uh she or he can see hundreds of problems to be solved uh, there are so many frictions uh, happening in our day to day life they will solve all of them 
what does college have to do simple uh, you know incubation is the right way to go uh, some basic skills have to be taught and after that idea cannot be forced we cannot tell uh, anshul you are a second year student you have to become an entrepreneur it just doesn't happen that way you have to have an idea idea has to come from you and then it's the college and the ecosystem's responsibility to nurture it ideas are fragile they need to be nurtured and college is the right environment to nurture fragile ideas wonderful wonderful so as mr khanna was suggesting that there should be a seamless collaboration between academia and industry sir how do you suggest how do we actually achieve that the practical implementation somehow sees missing in this you will have to unmute yourselves please sorry my mistake i was just saying yes and no to that question of yours anshul uh, so i am in bangalore been here for a long time which as we know is the it hotbed right uh, but i i i mean here also i have seen that in spite of having some of the you know the best of the names right which were nurtured here growed here grown here you know and and have scaled new peaks not only in it there are you know pharma companies also of note here there are startups of note here but the the feeling i get is that uh, the the organizations as well as the academic circles or the institutes are happy supplying happy supplying the people happy making sure that the day one campus slots are taken care of they are more than happy uh, you know putting advertisements that 5000 people got placed on day one day zero etc i have rarely seen an ad where people uh, you know the faculty members or research Uh, is is taking the front seat i mean forget the iscs of the world or the iim bangalore of the world that is not really the the point here um, so that is the no side of it but the yes side of it anshul is, is somewhere where i have seen a, you know uh, for again it may be a natural advantage to a university right we have uh, i'm naming this 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 university uh, you know and i'm sure you'll resonate with this this is ahp university which is uh, by ah premji right and i also happen to know him because i was in wipro uh, i happen to know the gentleman who also runs it actively uh, the the re the reasoning i bought it, the reason i bought it up is that you know ahp or premji or wipro doesn't have anything to do with it but they took a call when they started this that as a part of their curricula as a part of their offerings they will only go a certain path and which was exactly the path in terms of looking at the you know the the joint your know, joint collaboration or the active seeking of from the from the corporate world but that is just an example now i'm actually going to say a couple of other examples but again i don't i'm not taking the names of the universities and i've seen this in smaller places as well as in up north also in some of the new universities which have come up i think there is a there is a seeking out of what exactly should be the course content rather than just going be, you know blindly and saying that listen this is what i am going to do as a part of the a masters course or the bachelors course and i think it's a very interesting uh, deviation which i am seeing and the reason i bring this up is that these universities are willing to back it up it's not only the sponsorship or the monies which are making it interesting i think they have the wherewithal and the commitment and the belief that this is going to work so that is one answer to your question anshul but i think i will go back to the second you know this thing also by stay, saying again and i again use this word networking and i think vinith mentioned it in a different way by saying that you know getting more and more uh, discussions entrepreneurs coming in having that discussion i think networking and networking of any kind is very very important because networking is all about getting ideas sharing ideas and more importantly having an argument or a debate around that so i think these two combinations of networking and i i use networking more as a debate argument ideating coupled with the fact that you know if we have if we have the belief that things can work out and pan out it is it is definitely a possibility ahead anshul but like i said it's a yes and a no depending upon the belief system right right thank you so much let me go across to mr kalkar dr kalkar i'll request your views what are the challenges you see from academia's point of view in actually implementing this collaboration which we were discussing with uh, mr khanna 
basically what happened that uh, what uh, the, our honorable panel members have expressed i think the view is very clear and realistic i think because normally what happens that uh, this entrepreneurship sale or what we can e sale is only for the purpose of nac or accreditation purpose so there is uh, which we call as a novelty uh, that something is there or whenever they put in prospectus uh, there is an activity that we have this e sale normally in many institutions uh, this is on paper sometimes and really what vinay sir is telling that in his college it was really happened that the complete building was dedicated and uh, student were really doing something i think that kind of uh, follow up and that kind of uh, uh, follow up is very re much required what happens in our ecosystem of education i think we do not have any space left out we have a lecturing system starting from morning 9 to 5 or whatever it is i think the time space which is required for the student and i think in online mode we are learning now that there is a room space required for students also so self learning then group learning some activities required is not necessary that it should be monotonous in a classroom mode so i think uh, we have to change all this kind of mindset in days to come because uh, otherwise it is a novel activity normally whenever the accreditation teams come we show some room as a room which is dedicated for the entrepreneurs and we encourage we have some beautiful posters and some presentations like that but that bringing that idea to the reality and uh, trying to find out the real business solution i think the, what panel has suggested you have a large many institute have a large uh, alumni base i think this all alumni are working in various companies good capacities for an older older institution they can come ahead they can support either in form of capital or cop of technical support and one more thing i would like to understand that ki uh, in our system we have allowed uh, student uh, to think because they just have to copy the right answer from the book which is correct and then they, it comes on the answer sheet so application of mind and handling situation or a project based learning i think that needs to be nurtured more in the coming days because we may not be having the same kind of job which we have in past once you are started with the job i think you will only retire i think this possibility is not there in the future so i think interdisciplinary when we talk about the many institute like your institute or any other campus in pune also which they have multi faculty institute at the the institute student from management institute and the engineering institute and the pharmacy institute they should come here uh, together and then one person can know how about the technology one person can do the marketing one person can support in finance engineering student can come out with the design architecture student can help out so i think this multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary approach should be encouraged in future we have vertical walls for our education which i think the new education policy doesn't want now university our university has 13 faculties now they are compressed into four now i think the future policy tells that there should not be any faculty this vertical wall should be dissolved i think the student from engineering should work with the student of management and student of management should work with the student of pharmacy in case it is required and the architecture student can drop in with the design aspect of it so i think this kind of thing is the future but i think practically speaking mentally we have this kind of walls when it comes to real dissolution of that mental walls i think the future is good all right Let me take Dr. Aditya's views also on this question, please. Yeah, Anshul, uh, I was following up Dr. What Dr. Kelkar said, and he has certainly made a very good point that there is a necessity of interdisciplinary approach to develop entrepreneurship more. That is something that I was telling that about commercialization also. An engineer can come out with a fantastic product, and I, I'll I, because I am engaged with a few. of these uh, activities or rather new, new initiatives that are happening it in our entrepreneurship cell i found it engineer engineers are for example a simple example i am not taking i am not blaming them i am myself an engineer but many engineering students when they go on to this path they are more interested in making their product better and better okay fine tuning it to a level which may not be necessary okay but their whole focus is on developing a much better product rather than ensuring that it is so they need to understand where to stop and where to look at the other aspects which i am sure an interdisciplinary approach will help them because it will help them to understand okay this is enough for the need my need is this much this product is satisfying it why not let's go to the next step of saying how can we reach the customers or let's say we are already reaching a set of customers why are we only looking at why not go to the next set of customers 
another example i would also tell them is uh, one of the reason i say commercialization and not finance is many many entrepreneurs actually suffer on the marketing side extensively suffer on the marketing side for example a very simple approach of marketing is not generally approached is okay why don't you give out your products for free to the few okay and to test them out okay but many entrepreneurs would be very uncomfortable doing it this is no how we do we do that it is a, it, it has cost associated if i lose that money but that's the whole thing if you give your products to some influencers or some interesting people who can just discuss it out on the social media which you can then use to reach out to your customers but many entrepreneurs are not aware that this is there are many methods of doing it they would rather sell their product at a discount to someone then actually so it in a few places i am not joking but i think our farmers know about entrepreneurship much better you know the idea of keeping the some of these grains good quality grains back so that can be used to sow for the next season is something that they should be also learning is what is my side yeah vinith has a point to make so i would say just uh, uh sir uh, and this is maybe this is why ninad sir uh, you know enjoys having me on a panel because i i take on the panel before the panel can take on anyone else right uh, uh, so i you know we are discussing about what can we do better for our students and you know help them with entrepreneurship and frankly here we have everyone here you know definitely 15 years 20 years past their age of having graduated from college very far away almost a generation away from the kind of students who are today trying to be entrepreneurs right i mean when all of us were in college you know forget 5g or 4g you didn't have a wireless mobile phone end of discussion right i i got my first mobile phone in my last year of college and that also because it was in the us i'm sure in the india it would have taken few more years and the problem i see here is why does this panel itself not have two or three people who have graduated in the last few years and were entrepreneurs maybe in college or just right after college you know that would help the students connect a lot more then this becoming another group of people who are you know 15 20 years older than i am i am as well right i mean i am you know going to be 40 this year so you know we are all much older than the students that we are trying to talk to and that would be okay if it was a dialogue and i think this is what having those entrepreneurs come in and speak to your students will solve for in a larger way i understand this uh, webinar has certain uh, protocols and within that it's fine but the example is very stark and this is what the students need they don't need another person coming on stage or on a panel or on a webinar and talking to them they need to have a private space where their professor or their dean or their hod is willing to give them the confidence saying that okay my job was to invite this senior entrepreneur and make sure he accepts the invitation and comes and talks to you now that both of you are in the same room for the next 30 minutes i am going to walk away have a coffee and come back right and i think that kind of interaction is shockingly valuable and the job of the education system is to facilitate the interaction not necessarily manage the interaction so i just wanted to add this sorry if i went it off track right no oh, that's perfect that's perfect and my next question would be around this only i'll start with dr uh, mr karpe here sir uh, what do you suggest we have been stressing a lot on networking so how do you how do you suggest students can get access to that network of successful entrepreneurs vcs how can they take help in terms of resources access to those resources how do you suggest and i'll move on to mr vinith post your views on this please so oh, it is very easy now you know when vinith was in college and much before that i was in college it was impossible uh, today if i don't know vinith i can easily reach out to him and you know it's not difficult at all there are various linkedin there are so many stuff uh, you have to take initiative and students do take initiative but that's a cold uh, kind of a uh, networking possibility the other way to do it is to figure out from your alumni who are the successful entrepreneurs so i want i am a second year student i've got idea and i want to see how i can reach out to uh, potential investors entrepreneurs i have to figure out who are my people in from my college who have been successful their friends reach out to them ask them please give me an invitation please connect me to ninath please connect me to vinith they are happy to do it 
and people like us you will not believe this is like us are happy to get connections uh, it is not the other way around structurally the issue is the college yeah, needs to have a fundamental uh, approach strategic approach nahi matlab dusra chal raha hai to alumni uh, you know networking nahi nahi that's a that requires time energy investment but individually till that doesn't happen individually it is very very easy to do it through your own initiative through reaching out to entrepreneurs from your college your batch your uh, alumni and asking them to give uh, connects very easy not at all difficult right right can i have mr vinith's views also on this please absolutely anshul thank you and uh, thank you uh, nina ji for you know saying what uh, i would have also wanted to say uh in fact you know currently during the lockdown you know we we've set up uh, you know uh, internships which we never had right at a vc fund no one has internships and we were like the reason we did it was you know actually one of the articles that came across and our partners and as we shared it and we said hey a lot of internships are getting cancelled because the students are not able to go to that office or you know wherever they had to take the internship right pure logistical reason for it to be cancelled and we said why don't we try to take on some internships and one single linkedin post right by one partner that's it right it was not promoted we said hey listen if you had an internship that got cancelled or you are interested in internship here is a simple google form we'll connect you with a bunch of uh, startups right no guarantee no commitment that we'll connect you to so many startups and your internship is committed nothing right just a linkedin post with a link to a google form i mean the entire component of it took about 5 minutes right 3 minutes to make the form and 2 minutes to type the post and i think we within the first 7 days had over 500 people right these are students who are interested in entrepreneurship come on and say hey listen i did not even know this was possible right these are current third year and you know maybe final year students saying i did not know this was possible and in fact at orias we said hey why are we limiting this only to the startups you know we as a vc fund even we work with startups all the time why don't we take on some interns and it was i mean the quality of the interns let me be very frank over here i know this is being recorded and i'm sometime going to regret saying this but you know it it gave me a run for my money i said agar intern ka quality itna acha hai then you know i have to really up my game because this intern 5 10 years later is going to be a senior and you know then i will be out of a job but this is what interacting with interns is also exciting for the startup ecosystem they get that energy which otherwise maybe because of the daily work or you know just because they are a little bit older they have lost and interns bring you back and so you have to understand that as colleges you don't have to put in that much more effort to convince startups to say that hey listen can you come talk to our students can you take them on as interns can you tell them a little bit the smart founders know very intuitively that this is good for them as well and not just you know they are giving they are getting as well absolutely valuable so just me add one minute to vibhni yeah. you know we now have four interns uh, last year we had two which were physical and four interns i know met these interns again we got tons of application one person is sitting in bangalore one in gujarat one in delhi and one in bombay but doesn't matter so now we are also taking uh, interns sitting you know some other cities it's amazing you get the best talent in india they want to uh, intern with a vc firm uh, it's it's a win win situation I mean, so we have finished two and a half month internship. Never met them. I'll probably meet them next year, right? When you know when things become easier. Sure. Just as a you know, just as a feel good, come over for coffee, sort of. You know, one meeting a year after their internship. But yeah. Okay. Anyway. Wonderful. Wonderful. Please go ahead, Professor Alte. Can't this be taken forward to colleges also? Currently, as Vinit suggested, that it has been done just through a LinkedIn post. can't this post be circulated across all the colleges in india and all the students get access to such information wherein they can apply i'm sure it does happen nowadays if you see the colleges are very active on linkedin uh, they do receive it the placement cells of colleges the various societies of colleges are very active on linkedin that's why linkedin is considered in linkedin or internshala i'm sure internshala is a platform similar to yours where a lot of internships are posted and the way students engage with it nowadays i i don't know when i was doing my engineering internship one internship was a compulsion and students would go to that internship half the people would not even go for it because it was a compulsory one today i see my uh, second year engineering uh, graduate from my uh, engineering college which is my our sister comes and calling me up and saying sir 
I want to do an internship on a policy decision uh, in automobile engineering because I'm part of it. Can you, through your contacts, get it to me? Okay, that type of initiative nowadays students are taking a lot. They understand the value of work experience. What I have been trying, I'm, I'm always saying, and I'm a votary of, is that some same ecosystem, open ecosystem, needs to occur at two places, and I'm very clear, is at established institutions which are highly closed, or whether you call them in universities, traditional universities. The other side is such open culture should also exist into well-established organizations, companies. Okay, Large companies are also very selective on internships. For example, I know a series of banks, I'm sure I will not take any name, who have year after year refused to take any intern. Okay, And these are Indian banks, Okay, hardcore Indian banks, citing privacy of data. Whereas the same uh, students are easily able to get internships into foreign multinational banks. Is there no privacy data issues or cultures there? Right? But the Indian culture has been over time really. So I'm saying if you find new schools, they are very open into these types of things. You find startups, they're very open to that type of thing. Actually, I know at least a hundred or startups that we engage for internships and other things who come to us and say, we are going to take interns guys because we want your students to help us commercialize this product. Their job is to actually search markets for it. The core engineers and we are very happy to send our students there. I'm saying, but the same type of approach has to be taken up by large institutions and universities also to really create that culture is what I'm saying. Standalone institutions and startups are very open to that. I, I have to agree with, uh, you know, uh, what uh, Ritaji said. So the conversation uh, should not have gone along the lines of that Indian colleges don't support internship. I think what I wanted to say and what Ninaji also wanted to say, if I may, was that no matter how many companies present internships, there is always so much excitement and so much demand with the current generation of students that, you know, it's, it's a win-win. It's very simple. And how much ever we do, we can do more. That's all. Wonderful. Wonderful. Let me go across to Mr. Khanna also and take the corporate's view there. Sir, are you actually supporting uh, students, interns who are willing to take up as uh, Dr. Aditya was suggesting? that it is somehow difficult to get into big corporates for the internships. Startups too, as suggested, they are very flexible. What are your views on that? So the, there I have to actually, you know, uh, partly agree with some of the, you know, the unstated thoughts that the organizations like, you know, the bigger organizations, the tenured organizations become a little bit archaic. They also become a little bit, you know, selfish. I don't think that, you know, they, they necessarily look at the broader perspective or a broader good. So I have to say that you know it is it is limited to the areas uh, as and also to the to something which we believe that you know it it adds value. Now the reason I'm saying this is that it is not that uh, that is the only way to look at internships. But yes, I think bigger and, and I've seen at least four or five of the organizations in the last couple of decades that willy nilly we fall into that trap. It's very very difficult to uh, you know to qualify uh, you know internship beyond the boundaries which are you know the normal boundaries which all corporates look at. So I guess uh, in a way, yes, that, you know, numbers and wherever it makes uh, business sense, I think corporates do do that. But yes, there is also a fact that, you know, uh, it, it is not something which we will go beyond and explore uh, the normal thing. I mean, for example, if, you know, if you tell me that in NIT or, uh, you know, any other IT organization will be a natural thing that I will go and seek out some three or four young interns who are in absolutely diverse fields, I, I guess the answer may be a no. I will be more comfortable taking a taking an IT professional and then see that, you know, it's, a, it's an internship. So I, I guess that's as frank an answer which I can give as a personal opinion and as I think a, more of a generic organizational view. Right. I just want to, I may not have come across the right. I'm not saying that okay, organizations don't. I'll tell you a Another approach, okay, what I was telling is there were a, there are a set of archaic Indian organizations which are internships, if you really ask me, is the best way to recruit a student, okay, for a job. I agree. So you are able to engage that guy for almost two months, three months and really understand him. Okay, but I find the same organizations who refuse to take interns do come to us for final placements. It's, so it's not like they don't want to recruit. The thing is, we have, we, I personally believe, I don't I personally believe the concept is really wrong. It should have been. It should be an internship focus because then 
the hrs the business heads both are able to evaluate a guy much better and I, if the us is grown it is purely based on internships you are there the colleges focus more on internships it's not a joke but howard school howard business school more than 25% of students don't go for jobs but go for internships with whom they go for in internships with policy makers they go for internships and work out with uh, uh, what their parliamentarians are called in the congressmen and others so that they understand how policy is made and that experience gets them the job in our case internships are really valued low and people college is focus on placements and that is where i think we have basically gone wrong in the last 20 25 years but i i have a my only point on that is Ritya, that you know uh, institute like yours should stop entertaining all the corporates who come without asking for internships if they come for direct placements but anyway that's a different dialogue and a different debate yeah, certainly certainly but going back to vinith's point also i think it's it's, it's right that you know uh, the 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 thought process of certain uh, ideas <clears throat> come between <clears throat> come from within so it becomes easier for you to look at it but i also feel feel that you know the numbers if they become a little bit voluminous right and uh, this is back to ninad and vinith uh, you know talking about their uh, their uh, experience of the internships if it is if it's a number which is let's say limited i think there is a different approach if it's a number which is voluminous right if it is hundreds and 150s or and so on I mean, 50s or whatever i think what happens is that you know you need to then separate the wheat from the chaff right it is a question of 10 people being good interested etc uh, whereas when they apply for something like the way vinit uh, you said uh, and i totally agree with you that you know you get probably more interesting people who are more interested self driven and wanting to do certain things on their own rather than what aditya like you mentioned right that it is more of a you know something they have to go through and complete as a core rather than anything else agreed with you pankaj and in fact uh, the intention here was not to talk about internship but to talk about how people who have the mindset to want to do internships are probably the same people who will then have the mindset to be entrepreneurial as well right? no no i fully agree go, yeah i fully agree with it i mean that but the re- and then i think i like what you said uh, you know that the but reason i was connecting actually the other earlier point of yours that uh, Uh, why is there nobody in the panel at the age which you you know like the example you were giving so i think it's also the question of uh, uh, you know invigoration at the at the at the level of whatever people have right and it's actually the generational interest uh, i see it in the you know in the children of ours right in terms of that they are self driven they are probably beyond a little bit of fear right they don't care whether they fail uh, you know or they fail often or even if they make a fool of themselves i think they are very clear that you know for them a trial is a trial it's a victory by itself and unfortunately the system of ours obviously does not propagate that naturally and the my entire point of a larger organization was that you know you are just you know just caught up with so much in terms of what can give you you know productivity or billings or whatever it is that you tend to lose some broader concepts which one should engage in wonderful very candid points there and i am sure uh, corporates will also look into more of interns joining soon and so in the interest of time uh, actually if you don't mind i mean i have to really log out now uh, right. we were scheduled to end up at 4 so i have something at 4:15 i need to get in but we are just wrapping up now so in the interest of time we'll be wrapping up the session and thank you so much everybody for joining in and sharing your views i'll request dr kalkar for his thanks uh, thank notes please thank you very much anshul i know that uh, when a discussion everybody has put heart into this discussion i think that was a very uh, nice part of it because everybody feels that the new generation with we think that uh, the india should be the world leader i think they should hands on have hands on skills and practice in days to come and i think the higher education system will revamp itself with the coming education policy to see that the students of the future have tools and equipped with the kind of daring the kind of leadership the kind of skills which they are required as desired by all of you so on behalf of uh, myself and mba rondebhus and savitribai phule pune university i would like to thank all panel member for sparing their valuable time and sharing their thought process with uh, all of us i think this uh, discussion will definitely motivate the teachers and the student to bridge the gap between uh, a real industry exposure and the academia and i think which help all of us to drive a little bit ahead on the way of new education policy execution so here i would like to thank all of you and i would like to thank anshul kapoor for uh, organizing this uh, galaxy of expert 
for this today's uh, webinar and all of you for sparing your valuable time and guiding all of us. I think we'll be troubling you in the days to come for supporting and helping our students. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you for inviting. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.